Hey guys, Anthony, 4 Before Adventures. We've got a quick hot tip. It's a hot tip and a cold tip. For those people traveling Australia or anywhere you like with your Hiluxes or Prados, more I suppose to do with the Hilux, this specific point that I just noticed. I'm here in the Prado Hospital. We've just done some work on this Hilux and I've been on, a, on the injector replacement jobs. We do a, a long extensive road test, about 20 minutes, because we want to make sure it's a big job um, we don't have any issues, but we just want to make sure one of the best ways to make sure is a big road test, so we do that. Anyway, I've been on about a 20k drive. It is raining today, and I came. what we do when we come back, we pop the bonnet and we switch it off. We leave it on for a minute, have a listen, all good, switch it off, and then have a good look around, make sure there's no leaks of oil or fuel or any nuts and bolts, bits and pieces, clamps missing, which we don't find, but we just do it anyway, because that's what we do. It's the final quality assurance check. But what I noticed as soon as I opened the bonnet, it's relevant to this channel and touring Australia and adventures and all that sort of thing is cold water and hot engines. So what I noticed, so I popped the bonnet and it's not like it's the first time, but this is what gave me the idea. I need to probably make you aware of it and make this video. Um, where the, obviously you can see you've got the diesel engine, you've got the intercooler, you've got the plastic cover. And on the Hilux, you've got a bug catcher up there, you know, the air intake bug catcher, the air flow through the bonnet. We call it the bug catcher, right? Because it does catch all the bugs and feeds them straight in there. Anyway, there's a rubber seal, and you can see the mark from the rubber seal. It goes around here, right? All the way around, you can see the pattern. But when I open this hot engine, it's all evaporated because it's been about 10 minutes at least. Because uh, I was a bit slow, I should have got organized faster. And you would have seen the water, the wet mark, it was all around there, it was all wet in here. But obviously from the heat of the engine, it's dried up really quickly. It's probably only been five to ten minutes. But anyway, you can see a few drips there, but that's about all. My point is, it, driving in the rain, a small amount of water will push up the bonnet and go into the bug catcher and come into here. That's not a problem, it's actually really good. You'll find you get better performance in the cold and in the rain with that sort of thing, because that bit of water that's coming through here and it goes obviously down onto the intercooler can help with a bit of cooling and so you're just going to the, the system's going to work better like that it's actually really good where it could be more of a problem is if you're doing river crossings and i notice a lot of people they like to do river crossings and hit it hard and fast which isn't necessarily the way to do it it's not the best thing it can do damage to a number of components generally you're going to be okay though but i just wanted to put it out there and say well, just think about that because if rainwater comes in here and it was enough to wet that whole area and it was in a 20 minute drive of, it's not heavy rain, it's just normal consistent rain. You can hear it's raining now if you listen. You hear a bit of rain, no big deal. But it's enough that it's, when it's consistently wet that that water's pushing up through into there. So if you were to do a river crossing or some sort of crossing like that where I've seen some photos and I've seen some crossings been there done that, it could quite easily, the water could push up and a whole heap of water in a wave could, you know, so we're, personally I've even had water up the bonnet and hit the windscreen on the, <coughs> excuse me, on the 120 Prado twice that happened with no snorkel and it was an accident thing. One of the high country crossings, should have grabbed the water. <coughs> excuse me, you just saying, I mean. One of the high country river crossings it had a little deep pinch in it that I sort of didn't know about, so it was just momentarily Obviously the front and rear dipped. I should have known because the vehicle in front of me, the water went up momentarily halfway up the spare tire on the Prado, on the back door, which is very deep. But it was just a, a sharp little dip, if you know what I mean. It was a very narrow crossing and it really dipped down quite deeply, which is a bit dodgy really, because it's that it was that sort of steep and dip. It's one of those ones you could kind of get hung up on almost with a bull bar. No, it wasn't that bad, but if it got more washed out, then it possibly could. So. Anyway, that's what happened. Because of that dip, the water come up the bonnet, it went up the windscreen a little bit. If you get too much of that, it'll also drain down the bottom of the windscreen into this plastic area and it could end up going in your, inside your vehicle and blowing out your vents. That's happened to people I know as well. Um, so not ideal. But if the water's going up to the windscreen on the Prado, then obviously the same thing can happen on a Hilux. It's a smaller vehicle. It's uh, probably a bit lighter, so it could float away before that as well. But if it doesn't, then the water's going to push up, it's going to go straight in, and all that cold water is going to be doused all over the hot engine, including your turbo, which is just down over there. So it's going to go all on top of everything. Now, these Toyotas, they're pretty good, and they probably thought of that, but I don't know. I don't like, I don't think anybody likes the idea of giving a hot engine that's actually been running, working up and down some high country hills, 
a good douse of cold high country water you know not ideal so just something to think about slow it down a bit and try not to get the water coming over the top of the bonnet and if it is that deep that that's going to happen just be aware that that's the situation a lot of water can come down there um, and that's all I really wanted to say just consider that if you've got the bud catcher in the bonnet and you're doing river crossings so a lot of the time the recommended thing is in general you stop before a river crossing let everything cool down because you might have just come down a big hill hot breaks and whatever I can say it takes quite a while for everything to cool down but who's in a hurry you shouldn't need to be in a hurry slow down pull over take five or ten minutes you know take a break and take in some scenery have a look around and then proceed through the river crossing you might just check it out for five or ten minutes while you're having your morning tea or depending on what time of the day is it you know you might be having a beer some people are having a smoke whatever they want to do each to their own but take your time check it out let things cool down um, brake rotors obviously you can warp your brake rotors and do damage like that as well and remember once you get out the other side you should make sure you use the brakes a little bit to get them all uh, dried up as well because otherwise you could get to the next crossing and your brakes aren't working too well so anyway it was just about that hope you understand what i'm saying it may not m make any damage but it's just something to think about thanks for watching guys yeah.